Welcome back to Red Glasses Talks. The title today is Be Priority Driven as opposed to Pressure Driven. So the passage we've been reading week after week is from Matthew chapter 22, 37 to 39, where Jesus said the great commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And then it said there's a second commandment, likened to the first, that you love your neighbor as you love yourself. So we've been looking uh, at, first of all, this, prior, this third priority is a relationship with other people that are followers of Jesus. So we talked about the church, and we talked about how we are to function in a church in a healthy way. Now we're looking at the family. And today, under the family, we, last time was just a general look at the family, we're going to look at marriage. We're going to look at marriage. So the question is, who is my neighbor? Well, as far as your faith goes, if you're a follower of Jesus, the number one neighbor is your husband or your wife or your children, but especially it's related to marriage. Uh, my family is to be my primary responsibility, people-wise. And so someone said this, our family experience is the most significant experience of our lives. And I usually don't like to read something that's rather long, but it's not that long, but I want to read this to you about the most significant experience. Our family experience is the most significant experience of our lives. Regardless of the differences in culture, social, educational, and religious backgrounds, we all share the experience of being a child and for good or evil, spending our days of childhood in the context of the family. Here the seed is sown for what we become as adults. Early family experience determines our adult character structure, the inner picture we harbor of ourselves, how we feel about ourselves, how we perceive and feel about others, our concept of right and wrong. That is, the fundamental rules of human conduct that we call morality, the capacity to establish the close, warm, sustained relationships we desire, as well as the intimate sexual relationships necessary to have a family of our own, our own attitude towards authority, and how we resolve our ambivalence towards it, especially toward the ultimate authority, the Lord himself, in our lives. And finally, the way we attempt to make sense of our existence on this planet. But hear this. No human interaction has greater impact on our lives than in our family, our family experience. And so, as a result of that, let me give you a thought about marriage. And I could go on for days on the family and on marriage, and I've got a lot of material I've uh, spoken on about that, and some written. But listen, marriage is to be a gift of God. It's a gift of God. And God made us, God thought up marriage, so he ought to understand and know how it best functions. Marriage is God's tool or instrument to help us become like he wants us to be. So all the things you go through, I go through in a marriage, the good, the bad, the ugly, God uses all that to shape us and, and mold us into the person he wants us to be. Now listen, the key to a good family is a good marriage. The key to a good family is a good marriage. So here's the proposition. A faulty relationship with your partner will affect your relationship with God. A faulty relationship with your God will always impact and affect your relationship with your partner. So, how about a healthy family? A healthy family and a healthy marriage needs to be based upon a healthy relationship with Jesus, and a healthy relationship with Jesus yields a healthy marriage. So here's a couple questions for you. How would you describe, right now, your relationship with Jesus? Number two, how would you describe your relationship with your spouse? Need to make any changes? Need to work on it in any area? You think about that.